First start with inspecting your socket and use a Lucas curette to clean the granulation tissue. If you don't have a Lucas curette, use a long shaft excavator. Place your curette or excavator to the bottom of the socket and gently scrape the walls of the socket by coming up and always maintain that bony contact. Remove all granulation tissue and encourage bleeding. Right, so now we want to create a pocket between the bone and the soft tissue. And for that you use your mucoperiosteal elevator. Use the narrow sharp end of your mucoperiosteal elevator, go to the bottom of the socket and just come up and find the lip, the bony lip, the bony crest. And very gently once you find that, then you start going beyond that and just undermine that soft tissue away from that bony crest. Right, so again you go to the bottom of the cavity, you gently follow that bony wall, you come to the crest and then you go beyond that crest and gently create that pocket between the bone and the soft tissue. You can see how that soft tissue is now mobile and moving away from the bone. Just please be careful that you don't push your mucoperistole elevated through the gum. Please do this very softly and gently without damaging the soft tissue. You do this procedure on the platal surface as well and undermine a pocket both buccally and platally of the extraction socket. And obviously at all time maintain that bony contact. So even when you are undermining the soft tissue at the platal surface, you come up from the bottom of the socket, you reach the lip and then you go beyond it and maintain bony contact. We are going to be using the combi kit uh, which contains BioOS collagen and BioGuide. The BioOS collagen contains 90% uh, BioOS particles and 10% porcine collagen. The added 10% collagen is going to help uh, with the building of new blood vessels and bone and also it allows that little space in between the uh, uh, BioOS particles so they are not crushed into each other. When you open the pack you have a outer pack and an inner pack. The inner pack is sterile inside the outer pack you have the BioGuide to the left and the BioOS collagen to the right and the BioOS collagen is like a block rather than granules. This is how the BioOS collagen looks. If you have a sterile dish, put it inside the sterile dish. If not, keep it in that little container that it comes in and use that as your sterile dish. You now need to hydrate your BioOS collagen Either you use some saline solution to hydrate, if you don't have any saline solution, try to use a couple of drops of blood from the extraction socket to hydrate your BIOS collagen. Obviously it makes sense to place the BIOS collagen as a block inside the socket, but it's not always that easy. So I tend to like to cut it in smaller pieces and put it in the socket uh, as those smaller pieces. I start gently placing the pieces without crushing the BioOS particles in there and put them in one by one. The last piece is now extruding out of the socket so I take it out and I trim it and put it back in again. I do not want to press it or crush it into the socket. It is very important that you have blood covering the material. You don't want the material to be showing or, or look white. You want it to be covered with, with red blood cells. And, and if you don't have enough uh, bleeding in there, make sure you encourage bleeding. Please do not overfill your socket. You just want to get to the bony wall and not all the way up to the gingival uh, margin. Uh, you need to leave enough space for your collagen membrane to cover it all. Now we are ready to cover our uh, uh, grafting material with a membrane. In this case we are using Geist Leash BioGuide. 
it has two surfaces, a rougher surface and a smoother surface. The rougher surface will be going against the bone and the smoother surface will be exposed. It's now time to shape your collagen membrane and I usually make a hourglass shape out of the membrane. Check the shape of your membrane. In this case, I feel like it's a bit too long, so I'm going to make it shorter and also I make the edges rounder so it's nice and smooth. You can use any sort of scissors, uh, a curved scissors is normally a lot easier to use. Now we are ready to cover the grafting material with collagen. I start with the platal surface, gently tuck it in, uh, in that pocket that I created and again I tuck in the buccal surface very gently and all that is done with care without damaging the soft tissue or penetrating through the soft tissue. There we go, we are now ready. The uh, grafting material and the collagen member looks nice and neat. I just tuck the edges in. We are ready to place a figure of eight suture and I normally use a resorbable material. To place a figure of eight suture, I basically go from one end cross over to the other end and then go to the other side and then cross over again uh, and make a knot at the buckle surface. I have gone through the distal buckle uh, part of the flap, crossed it over to the mesioplatal part of the flap and crossed it over. So now from the distal uh, platal uh, part of the flap, crossing over to the mesio. Uh, buckle surface of the flap. As I'm going through, I'm pushing down the collagen membrane because I don't want to nip the collagen membrane and displace it. I'll go through the uh, mesio buckle surface and place my knot at the buckle surface. There you go, that's my figure of eight suture and it's keeping the uh, grafting material and the collagen membrane nicely in place. 